How's it going guys? My name's Shane. Welcome back to the Horror Basement. And today we ask the question, what would happen if you combined a famous short story by Edgar Allan Poe, 1931's Frankenstein, a weird lingerie fetish, and a bunch of B-roll of cats fighting in an alley, and then tried to fit all of that into a movie with a runtime of 51 minutes? You would have Maniac from 1934 which is the movie we're going to be talking about today on this installment of the classic horror review series. So Maniac is a short and very weird movie, as, I, as you can glean from what I just said, uh, based very loosely off The Black Cat, which is a short story by famous horror author uh, Edgar Allan Poe. This movie follows Maxwell, who is a disgraced or wanted fugitive uh, that is a former uh, vaudeville impressionist, uh, someone that impersonates people, does impressions, that kind of thing. And he is playing the lackey uh, to a crazy old scientist man named Dr. Meyer Schultz, who is doing the, you know, the tried and true uh, I want to bring dead bodies back to life routine, which you see in so many of these movies. Um, but Maxwell is unable to procure him a dead body, um, because he gets scared by a bunch of cats fighting and runs away. Uh, so Dr. Meyerschultz starts verbally berating, um, Max until the point, to the point where Max ends up just shooting him and killing him. He then uses his extensive, um, makeup and impression abilities to start impersonating uh, Dr. Meyer Schultz, which he does for the remainder of the movie. The only problem is uh, Max is a vaudeville actor and not a doctor, so pretty much immediately afterwards, he injects um, a mental patient named Mr. Buckley with uh, the wrong vial of chemicals or whatever, which causes Mr. Buckley to go even more insane, um, snatch up some random... A girl who he proceeds to carry off uh, naked away from Dr. Meyer Schultz's office and sexually assaults in a uh, field. Now, it's not uh, particularly graphic, but the the woman in question who seems to be, um, who seems to not really protest because she's in some kind of uh, cat pseudo catatonic state because she's also a mental patient. Um, she is uh, topless for this scene, um, because this was actually before the Hayes Code, which is why a lot of movies from the late 30s, early 40s, um, do not have as much um, nudity and violence. So the problems uh, continue to rack up for uh, Dr. Meyer Schultz, um, because his, uh, well, Max pretending to be Dr. Meyer Schultz, uh, because Max's, uh, ex-wife, ex ex estranged wife, um, ends up showing up after a protracted scene of her and her friends, um, have it doing a bunch of dialogue, uh, all in their undergarments, their, what was considered lingerie by 1930s standards, which, uh, again, you know, pretty tame, but apparently back in the day, that was very, you know, scandalous. So she shows up um, thinking that Max has gotten a job with this prestigious doctor, uh, Dr. Meyer Schultz, uh, when really she's talking to Max himself the entire time. Um, so Max decides to... Uh, lock Mrs. Buckley and his ex-wife in the basement, and they just start um, beating the hell out of each other. Uh, but it's all broken up when the cops arrive and find the actual body of Dr. Meyer Schultz, which was buried, or rather entombed, in the wall with one of his cats, which is the only way this story has any connection to the Black Cat by Edgar Allan Poe. 
And the other odd thing to about this movie is that in between each scene, there's this big, like, scroll of information about, uh, like, various mental disorders as they were, um, as they were understood back in the 30s. Uh, so it's almost trying to pass itself off as a, like, public service film, like, it's legitimate, but, um, there's tons of spelling mistakes and other weird shit because, uh, this movie was made expressly for the purposes of being shown in, like, a traveling show. So the creator of the movie just made up all the, um, the mental disorder, um, the mental disorder bullshit, uh, so you can pretty much ignore all of the, because I took a bunch of notes about all of these weird 1930s mental disorders, only to find out that it's all pretty much a con, and the movie is just intended to be weird and violent and have a bunch of girls in lingerie and one topless girl, uh, so people would pay a nickel to go see it at, like, carnivals. But overall, I actually, um, really enjoyed it. It's, like I said, super fucking weird, uh, which makes it enjoy, it makes it kind of enjoyable, and it's only, like, 51 minutes long, so you're not losing much, uh, you're not losing much of your day if you do want to check it out. And I imagine you can find it somewhere on YouTube if you don't have the, uh, the box set that we're viewing here. So that's going to be it for today's video. Uh, if you enjoyed it, please leave a like. Leave me a comment in the comments if you want me to review anything. And uh, hit that subscribe button to join the Basement Army today. And I'll see you all in the next one. Thank you. And one thing I forgot to say, uh, at various points in the movie, there is uh, witches and demons, like, superimposed over the movie that's happening to, like, show that Max is going crazy. Um, these are, these images, or these pieces of film, are actually stolen from the 1922 Dutch silent horror film, Haxen, which the creator of the movie just, like, stole to put over top of his movie for certain parts. Uh, so I just wanted to mention that, because uh, I was like, I was watching, I was like, that fucking Haxon? So you know I spend too much time watching old horror movies, because like, ah oh, yes, that's that one silent Dutch horror film about Satan from the uh, 20s. But anyway, uh, thanks, subscribe. Love you, bye.